So for the most part, all the videos that I've been making lately have been based off of, you know, questions that I've gotten throughout the community. Uh, generally speaking, like when it comes to having like a compound of specific questions, like, you know, how to become a firefighter or, you know, where do I start getting a bunch of those questions from, you know, many different candidates. It leads me to actually developing the videos that I've been making. But I, what I wanted to do is I went, wanted to actually start making specific videos, literally just going through some of the comments that I've been getting throughout videos or emails and just kind of answering some of those questions because I know a lot of the questions that are asked, especially via email, you know, there's many other candidates out there that maybe have the same questions. So there was one candidate that actually reached out to me from Instagram and he was doing a, a report or a, um, a paper of some sort of, you know, firefighter experience, kind of what it's like to be a firefighter going through the testing process, kind of he wanted to get my two cent and my experience on kind of what it, my experience has been like and uh, what's my testimony behind everything. So I wanted to go through these questions with you guys uh, because I feel like he asked some pretty important questions that a lot of you out there may have similar questions and here go some answers for it. So I can go deep into, you know, conversation with these topics here you know, hours and hours worth of content that I can cover. But honestly, I'm just going to read over these questions and kind of give you just as brief of an answer as I can just kind of shed some light on kind of what's going on within these questions. So for the first one, uh, he asked, uh, what made you want to be, become a firefighter? So I told him, you know, there was two pivotal moments in my life. Uh, when I was younger, uh, my family grew up on welfare, uh, you know, financial means and, you know, getting things during the holidays and stuff was uh, hard for, for my mom. And when it came to the holidays, you know, you'd have the fire department come out, you know, in their fire truck lights and sirens kind of almost putting on a show for us. And then they'll hop out their rigs, you know, bring in food and, and gifts during the holidays. I remember seeing that. And then everybody within the community, you know, looked at these firefighters just like with the utmost respect. And it was just like a, a big sense of pride. And I knew that that's something that I wanted to chase when I was older. And it wasn't until about my sophomore year in college when I really decided like, hey, you know, I'm done with football. You know, I'm going to, you know, work hard, go through my collegiate career. And then once I'm done, I'm going to go straight in, get my EMT and then pursue the fire career. So the reason why I really wanted to pursue it was I knew I wanted to dedicate my life and giving back and making a difference in other people's lives. And obviously there's a lot of different things out, you know, outside of fire that can fulfill that achievement. But it was more than that. You know, leaving sports, uh, I, I needed that team camaraderie, uh, that brotherhood and sisterhood, and the fire service offered that, you know, especially going down to the fire stations, you know, it's like being in the locker room, you know, you know, rubbing elbows, you know, um, you know, talking crap with one another, just enjoying one another, you know, eating food together, preparing for, you know, our games with one another. Once we leave, once we leave that locker room, we're hitting the field and it's all about business. It's the same thing in the fire service. When we're at the fire station, you know, we're studying, training together, preparing meals, rubbing elbows, making jokes, cracking jokes on one another. And then once those tones go off, you know, we're getting to the truck and responding to a call and it's all about business. So that's something that I needed. And one of the big things was everything that I did in my life, I wanted to be opposite of what my family displayed and kind of what the people that I was around was displaying of kind of a lifestyle. And I wanted to kind of run away from that and create something different. And the fire service offered that, you know, to me, I knew that when it came to my kids, I wanted them to look up to me and be like, wow, you know, my dad's doing something great. He's helping people. He's making a difference. You know, my dad's a firefighter. That was a big sense of pride that I wanted to obtain. And, you know, when I had the privilege and um, of calling myself a firefighter and, you know, I have pictures with, you know, my son on the fire unit and stuff, that's truly sentimental and powerful for me. And I, that's something that I needed in my life. And also one of the biggest factors was the fact that Firefighters work 10 days out of the month, you know, depending on whatever your schedule is, 24, 48, whatever the case is, 48, 96, 10 days out of the month. So that means a third of your life, you're going to be pretty much working, but then you have all that other time to do any endeavor that you want to do. And for me, I wanted to make sure that, you know, I was there for my kids and providing for them and supporting them in their sporting events and, you know, uh, just being a part of their lives, you know, going down to their school and helping out. That was extremely important to me. So, you know, the scheduling the sense of pride and doing for others while still fulfilling my own needs as an individual and as a husband and father, the fire service offered that to me. I know that was a super long answer, but I kind of wanted to just uh, really kind of show you, quickly show you why I pursued the fire service. Everybody's reasoning is different, you know, and some may be similar, but for the most part, people are different. So uh, as for the second one, is it what you expected it to be like? So I can truly say it was... Uh, 
it was more than I expected it to be like. I knew that there was a lot of excitement going in ahead of time. Uh, you don't really know, you know, some of the negatives of the job as much when you're, you know, super green and you're super excited to pursue that career because you're just looking to get in. But honestly, it was more than I expected. Um, just the the sense of help and support. Uh, like, for instance, perfect example is, you know, anytime you have, you know, a, a specific event going on in your family or something major happens, like it's it's without a question. It's a quick phone call or a quick conversation with your your captain or your supervisor on duty. And boom, it's taken care of. They have, a, you know, a man or a woman coming in to support you and help you and you can go take care of your business. Uh, just the, the support in regards of, you know, training you and making sure that you're dialed in. So whenever it comes to, you know, fire suppression or your EMS skills or whatever, you have that support and you have that skill and knowledge so you can be successful. Um, uh, and another big thing is just like, there's so much excitement going in, you know, you think you're fighting fire and, oh, you know, we're going to be training together and I get to put on the turnouts and all that stuff. Like all that stuff is heightened times 10 when you, when you get on and it's crazy. Cause it's like. We work so hard to pursue this career, and when we finally get there, you know, it's like, wow, I can't believe I'm here. So it's like surreal. So like when you get on, that surreal feeling doesn't really go away for a while. I was in for about four years, and that feeling still didn't go away. There was days I was like, wow, I can't believe I'm doing this. You know, I'm hopping on a rig and, and you know, fighting fires and helping people and, you know, training. It, it was just the feeling is hard to explain. But when you get there, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's definitely more than I thought, okay? But there, without, you know, with all the positives that go into it, there's still some negatives that come in that you don't really necessarily expect as a new person. Well, unless you're well coached. As for the third one, why did you start a YouTube channel and guides for future firefighters that you don't know or will probably never meet? So for me, I knew when I first started uh, to pursue the fire career, you know, I would go online and search, you know, how to become a firefighter. And it was just like super, you know, vague and, um, not as much information out there. You know, they would teach you the basic, you know, go get your EMT, uh, having sure you have a valid driver's license, get a CPAT and all that stuff. Like there wasn't really any detail or specific examples of kind of like what's the insight look like, what's the academy look like, you know, what's, what's the feelings like, what's the emotions that you go through. So I knew that, Whenever I got off probation and I was working with cadets at the time, I was part of uh, the cadet program as a mentor, and I realized there was a need out there. Running calls, people always asking us how to become a firefighter. Even with our cadets, there was still a lot of confusion, and they were working side by side with us. So I was a personal trainer at the time, uh, you know, I had clients uh, teaching youth and all that stuff. And I just realized that, you know, I'm good at developing people and, and helping people. Uh, let me Let me get this out of here. So at the time, you know, I was a personal trainer and I knew that I was good at, you know, helping and developing people. So I had a knack for explaining things to where most people can understand. So when it came to the fire service aspect of, you know, interview preparation, written exam preparation, physical fitness and preparation for a fire academy, I felt like I had the ability to make a difference in others' lives. And I was doing it on an individual basis and a group basis, you know, within our specific organization, but that wasn't enough for me. So I knew that, you know, there were sources like YouTube and websites that I utilized to kind of give me information. So I was like, what can I do to provide more and do more and offer more for candidates out there? How can I reach more people and make a difference? So I started doing some research and that's where Firefighter Ambitions YouTube channel came from and the Firefighter Ambitions website came from. I just wanted to have a place where, you know, any and all candidates can come and get the answers to the questions that they have. And obviously, I can't answer every question, but as we grow and as we build as, as a business and as a company and as a channel, uh, we're going to try to cover those things. So those issues aren't issues anymore. Those obstacles aren't obstacles. And regardless of whether I meet those candidates or not, just the fact that, you know, they reach out via email or comment and they kind of let me know, like, hey, these are really helping me. This really changed this. That's all I want. Even if it was one person, like, that's a great feeling for me. That's the reason why I went into the fire service. You know, I... I want to give back and make a difference because there's been a lot of people that stepped up in my life that helped me get me to where I'm at today. So I got to pay it forward. And this is one of my ways of paying it forward. As for the fourth question, uh, what makes you want to come to work every time? So pretty much what makes you want to come back to work every day? Honestly, it's my why. And this is what I teach a lot of my clients and past cadets is, you know, understanding what my why is. My, my why is my wife and kids. Uh, when I was a firefighter and I was active on duty, there were days where, you know, I was tired and, you know, I was 
teaching at the college the day before and working with cadets while still working on my personal training business and working with a newborn baby and my wife and I was extremely exhausted, but it didn't matter. Obviously I had to respond to, you know, duty. That's, that's my job. But re what really kept me motivated was knowing that, you know, I was, I was providing for my family. You know, I had to set a standard for my family and especially for my son. And, uh, just to, just the thought of me pr providing for my kids and providing for my wife and, and, and setting that standard was, was all the motivation that I needed. I needed to do what I had to do to be successful within my career so me and my family could be successful financially, security-wise, emotionally, just stable in every aspect of our life, and the fire service offered that for me. Uh, as for uh, number five, how has the first responder environment changed over the years? So I can't speak in every detail and aspect of this, but I was fortunate enough to earn a spot within our squad unit that had, you know, members that were on for, you know, 40 plus years. So I got a lot of their experience and testimony on kind of how things changed over the decades. And um, one of the big things is, is the EMS side of it. I know there's departments out there that may not have EMS side of it, whether they have a separate EMS and fire division or whether they might not provide EMS at all. But um in the past, in the past past, you know, there, there was fire departments that were strictly responding to fires, you know, but nowadays, you know, we have ALS units, you know, we have medics and EMTs on, on the units and, um, even hazmat and TRT, technical rescue, swift water, there's all these different aspects and specialties within the fire service that's ever changing. And the reason why it's ever changing is because obviously we're uh, city, city employees, government employees, we're firefighters. So when we respond to emergencies, there can be all types of emergencies. It may not just be fires. Fires are a small percentage of our actual job. Over 95% of what we do is EMS calls. So, uh, you know, when it comes to emergencies, it could be, you know, drownings, you know, swift water emergencies, you know, trench uh, rescues, mountain rescues, uh, EMS stuff, or whatever the case is. So, uh, as time evolves, as we become more educated, and as we see that there's a need that, you know, the fire department can fulfill, they're going to start training us to fulfill those needs. So, you know, as years go on, I'm sure things are going to be, you know, more dialed in where you may have nurses in the field, you know, on the fire rigs and all those different kinds of things. Uh, as for six, do you like how firefighters are branching out and running more medical calls? So I just basically covered this one uh, for, for us. In the Valley in uh, Arizona, so Phoenix, you know, Glendale, Tempe, all the areas with uh, all the departments within that area, that, that was our standard. Uh, like I said, that's a majority of what we did. So we, unlike, you know, a lot of other departments out there that may have, you know, separate units or separate branches or may not run EMS calls. For us, that was that was the norm. So I don't know anything outside of that. We you know we respond to EMS and non EMS calls. And that's just kind of what we did. As for number seven, do you like the direction the fire service is going towards? So there's a lot of different topics I can cover in regards to this question, but one in particular that is, you know, is lives in my heart is the whole uh, cancer prevention side of it. So in my academy, there was a gentleman by the uh, last name of Ranky, and we named our academy class off of him after his name. He uh, was diagnosed with cancer, and uh, one big theme in in not big thing, but one big deal that the fire service has been migrating towards is like what, in which ways can we influence, you know, and lower the standards of firefighters, you know, being diagnosed with cancer? Like how can we prevent them from the exposures? So one big thing for us was just being aware of, you know, you know, soot and stuff on, you know, carcinogens on turnout. So we had a two turnout kind of rule that we had to live by. So we were issued two sets of turnouts, which was huge. Uh, so say we responded to a fire call and we, you know, we went out, suppressed fire, you know, knocked down the fire, did all that stuff. By the time we got back, we went out of service, deconned the unit, deconned our SCBA, you know, took our, um, our active uh, turnouts in, threw them in the extractor, got them all washed. And we had our second set and we put them on the truck. So things like that. I, I love that um, in the fire service, they're being more tentative to the health of the fire members because, if you look at statistics, it's it's crazy. Cardiovascular uh, death, or you know, just any type of uh, cardiovascular issue, is like one of the biggest problems within the fire service. But you know, the cancer stuff, all that stuff is coming up, and that's just due to constant exposure as firefighters as we go on these fire calls, and all all these different types of calls, whether it be hazmat or whatever the case is. You know, 
honestly, we're running towards the danger. You know, a lot of people retreat. We're running towards the danger. So uh, it's not just about being healthy through a 25 plus year career. It's about, you know, being healthy and durable throughout uh, your career, having longevity, but then living a long, as long as we possibly can outside of the career in retirement. Okay. So this is one of the ways that the fire service has been really being, you know, full steam ahead, trying to prevent the amount of exposure that firefighters are facing. And I, I, I think it's the best thing ever. And I'm excited to see where the fire service goes in that regard. Uh, as for the eighth one, uh, do you think it has gotten more or less political? I think politics are always going to uh, be a big influence, especially when it comes to, you know, uh, city departments. Uh, just having that working relationship with uh, city officials, you know, make sure that you have people in your corner. So when you as a fire department, you know, have needs, whether that be you know, a new station, uh, a new rig, more members, whatever the case is, you have that support so you can get those votes. Um, there was a lot of issues that I've seen, you know, just kind of riding along, even being in the fire service myself that I kind of saw, you know, when it came to department officials and, you know, city officials kind of button heads. And no matter, no matter what this, you know, the scenario is, uh, I really hope that when it comes to the relationship with, you know, city officials, uh, when it comes to the politics, you know, our union representatives, I hope everyone truly has their head and their hearts in the best place because at the end of the day, if our firefighters aren't taken care of, how are we supposed to do our jobs and be great at it? You know, how are we supposed to do our jobs well so we can, you know, have a positive influence and impact on the citizens we serve and the cities we serve? Because at the end of the day, if we can't take care of our firefighters, how can they take care of other people? And the same goes with, you know, police or, you know, any first responder, uh, a private ambulance, whatever the case is. Like, I just hope that we gravitate to a place where firefighters, politics, unions, city officials, government officials, whatever the case is, all can come to a, a consensus to where we see like, hey, we have to take care of our first responders, hands down, so they can take care of everybody else. As for uh, the last one, I'm kind of running along here, uh, do you feel like you are doing everything you hope to do in your career? So when I was in, when I was active in, in the career, I resigned out, uh, 2019 I was done so with this I did I did more than I absolutely thought I you know when I first thought I think I'm just getting in gonna be a firefighter for about you know 10 years or whatever the case is and promote when I can but honestly when I got off probation I think I had like maybe a month two months of where I was just kind of roving around and then uh, luckily there was a couple members that stepped down from our special ops so they stepped down from their TRT and hazmat spot so there was I think it was four or five, maybe six spots that had opened up. So, you know, I put my name in the hat and I tested, uh, I can't remember, did we do a written? I tested, interviewed, and was lucky enough to be selected, which is nuts because if you were in Phoenix, to even have a chance at earning these spots, you had to have like 10 years on the job. And, you know, I was fresh off probation and I happened to earn one of those spots. So I was lucky enough to go through the Special Ops Academy, get technical rescue train, hazmat uh, technician train. So I got certified in all those things. And the wild thing is, is as a new member, you have low seniority. So when it comes to bidding for a home, what I mean, what I mean by bidding for a home is like you put your name in the hat saying, hey, you know, I noticed that there's a, a home, there's a spot open on, you know, engine 151 at station one or whatever the case is. And you put your name in the hat and based on your seniority, you may be selected to earn a home. So where you respond to that home or that station every shift. So instead of just roving from, you know, station to station based off uh, your department needs, you have a home that you go to, which is nice. So you don't have to carry all your stuff around and you work with the same crew. So I, I put my name, uh, I was special op trained. So I was TR team hazmat. So I put my name in the hat for uh, our squad home. And for some reason, none of the seniority guys put their name in the hat. So I ended up getting the spot. So boom, boom, it's just academy, probation, Special Ops Academy, boom, I got a home. And I am so blessed that I got that home because the, the members that were there, uh, my brothers that were there, they really gave me on life, you know, outside of the fire service and uh, how to be successful in the fire service. They trained me on, you know, I became an active engineer where I got a lot of support from my engineer that was on there. So I was driving, you know, the engine, you know, pumping, pumping lines and uh, riding the, uh, driving the squad, which was super fun, the massive rig. Uh, so I got to do a lot. And uh, one of the biggest things is just like 
they really kept me grounded on, you know, career, career is important, but at the end of the day, family is important. And they were one of the big influences of why uh, my wife and I had decided to, you know, step me back out of my career. She took on the load as a nurse about to be an MP and I stepped out, resigned, and now I'm taking care of my kids full time and kind of just working on, you know, my businesses and just kind of doing what I can to uh, make an impact on candidates like yourself. So there's just a lot of things that's been great uh, pursuing a fire career. It's opened up a lot of doors for me. It's um, it's gave me a lot of life experience in a short span of time. Uh, I was hired in 2015, officially out in 2019, well, late 2018, 2019. And there was a lot of experience and knowledge that I've gained during that period. And I'm glad that I've had those experiences. I'm glad that I've crossed paths with the individuals that I've crossed paths with. And I've created brothers that I will have for a lifetime. And what I'm set to do here is I'm just set to continue to try to make as big of an impact as I can in you guys' processes and um, just trying to help you reach your goals. Because I remember what it's been like, you know, being on the other side of it, you know, being new and, and going through the testing process, going through all those emotions. Just know you're not alone. You know, all us firefighters have been successful. We've been through it in our own ways. Everyone has their own path. You know, many paths lead to the same destination. Just know that as long as you follow your mentor, whether that's me or somebody else, and you're taking in these guides and kind of internalizing, discarding what you don't like and taking in what you do like, making it your own and truly putting in the, you know, the preparation well in advance, you're going to be well on your way to crushing the testing process and rightfully earning your spot within the fire service. With all that being said, I know this is a long video, but uh, there's a lot of information that I think can be valuable to you guys. With that being said, like I always say, continue to work hard, stay consistent, and I'll catch you on the next one. Good luck, future firefighters.